Well, hey everyone, how's it going? So, yesterday I posted a video on this inverter. I was doing a temperature test of this inverter, and I had a load of near 5 kilowatts on the inverter, and I was doing some uh, probing of each of the components to see you know, how hot they were getting. And in total, I probably ran that load for maybe about 15, 20 minutes tops. So... Uh, the whole point in that wasn't just to say that uh, it runs cool. The point in that was to show you that even when there is a load on the inverter, that the temperature is not really that high on this particular inverter. That is the different style that they use for their larger inverters versus the torpedo style inverters that they have, which are very confined and it's very hard to get the heat out of those because you have one main fan at the rear, and then they've got a couple of fans in the middle that I think are pointless because when you have a small confined space, then you can only move so much air through and it doesn't matter how many fans you have in that same space, it's not going to accelerate the air anymore if the fans are moving at the exact same speed. So it might help a little bit, but I don't think it helps all that much. So that's why they did this redesign here because it opens up the case. They've got the three fans on the back that pull the air in and push it out the vents which is a much better design than that torpedo style uh, because there's a lot more room in here for the air to actually flow out rather than get stuck because on those versions you got the main board at the rear that's going to get hot and that hot air is going to be pushed over the transformers that are getting hot and then the transformers are going to get hotter because they're being basically doused with air uh, that's hot so anyways uh, this particular inverter here is rated to 15 kilowatts according to PowerJack. However, there's one thing that you need to be aware of. If you watched my two videos ago, that is, uh, when I was uh, explaining this inverter and the issues that I had had with it, um, you'll know that I am basically using just one single leg on this inverter. So you've got the transformer here that's in the middle. It's a double wound transformer, so it has two outputs and it has two inputs. So one of those is wound to 220 volts, the other one is wound to 110 volts. So the load that I put on it yesterday was one half of the load that was possible out of this inverter, and one half of the total capabilities that is of this inverter is 7500 watts per leg. Okay, so you got the two legs here. One of them is 110 volts. The other one is 220 volts. I was running exclusively on the 110. I was not touching the second leg, which is 220 volts on this particular inverter. So you can deduce from that that from the near 5 kilowatts that I was pushing through it with a theoretical maximum of 7,500 watts per leg, I was up in the three quarters uh, range of the actual total capacity of the inverter. Now, if I were using both legs at the same time and I was pushing 2,500 watts per leg, then yes, that wouldn't be so impressive. But because I was pushing near five kilowatts on a single leg with a total maximum capacity of 7,500 watts and the temperatures are staying extremely cool, then that tells me that this inverter will stay cool even as you approach that maximum there, okay? A sustained load on these inverters is not what actually kills these inverters because as you bring a load up, the temperature of the components will rise, but they'll rise slowly. What burns these inverters up are the MOSFETs, and that's from surge loads. That's from high surge loads where the inverter suddenly has something really hard that it's got to start, like a central air system or something that's got a motor that just really cranks on the inverter, if the MOSFETs are already really hot or they're warm and suddenly they're subject to this extreme load, then they're going to poop, they're going to burn up, just like that. It's not, the it's not the transformer that's going to burn up, it's going to be the MOSFETs. So... Uh, what I was demonstrating yesterday is that under a continuous load of about 5 kilowatts, this inverter stayed nice and cool. So if you, for example, in your house, 
you have just a couple things that are running and you've got a you know a pretty low load and then something starts such as your central air well all that current is going to be rushing from the battery bank to the inverter to the output preferably if you're central air you're not trying to run off of one of these plugs but it's going to then jump hopefully to your central air however uh, if the load is too great if the surge is too great then it's going to blow something up in here because it just cannot handle it. It's it's an overcurrent issue. And these MOSFETs do have a limit on their current. Now usually you can get away with brief, very brief surges on these MOSFETs. But if they're already really hot and they're already being pushed and then suddenly you just start something up that's just so massive that it just completely blows up the MOSFETs. So that is an issue. So my demonstration yesterday was just about the, the temperature of the system while it was under a pretty good load. Yes, it's not the 15 kilowatt load, but unfortunately, I cannot draw 15 kilowatts from this inverter. But being that it's a single leg, it does give you a good idea of what the inverter is going to do under heat because one half of that transformer is basically not being used. It's just all going into that single... 110 volt wound or winding in that transformer. Yes, it's still going to get hot and heat up the surrounding uh, winding, but it's not going to be that big of a deal, really. And this transformer is rock solid. It really is. It's so well built and so heavy duty. That's probably the best component that they have in this entire inverter. And they did go about upgrading all the rest of the components to try to be able to handle that. But the most common failure of these is the MOSFETs, the MOS boards, and that usually happens under load. Yes, I know some of you out there, and it actually happened to me too, where the previous inverter that I had that was a prototype, it actually burned up the, MOSFET, uh, the MOSFET boards, and uh, I wasn't even doing anything with it. I had my computer on. whoop de doo Nothing else was starting. I didn't have any big load on it or anything else like that. It was just my computer, and all of a sudden, poof, every one of the MOS boards went. That was probably due to an internal failure that was due to shipping. Uh, the unit had been dropped, so it's a possibility that the shipping actually did that. Now, I'm not trying to make excuses, but I'm saying that MOSFETs don't just blow up when they're under extremely low load, unless they're shorted out for some reason, or there's another issue. So, uh, but yeah, anyway, so that's, that's, where I'm, that's why I wanted to explain with this, is that um, I was about three quarters of capacity on one leg. I can't use both legs, so I cannot test this all the way up to 15 kilowatts. My battery bank is not large enough anyways. So if you're thinking about getting one of these and you're worried about them overheating, heat is the last issue you're going to have with this inverter. Trust me. When those fans are on and they're running, no matter how hot it is in your garage or your house or whatever it is you're doing, those fans are right over the top of the main components. So they are gonna keep this nice and cool. Unless you're really cranking this thing full time and then you got a lot of surges going on at the same time, but whose house does that? I mean, seriously, are you gonna turn on your electric stove, your central air, and your dryer all at the exact same time? What's the likelihood that's gonna happen? If you're investing into something like this, you're probably gonna be pinching because you know that your battery bank can only take so much and you're not going to just blow it all up in one shot. Most people are pretty conscious about that kind of stuff. I am. I know I am. I don't let any of that stuff run when I'm on my inverter. So, uh, yes, advertise it and it should be able to do what it claims. I understand that. I totally get it. But um, if you're going to be buying one of these, don't buy it so that you can crank 15 kilowatts out of it 24-7. Just don't. Even if it was another inverter that was guaranteed to 15 kilowatts, it's probably going to cost you $10,000 anyways. So this is considered what I what I would consider to be a bargain. But anyway, that was pretty much it. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer those. But um, the, the inverter itself does, in fact, perform quite well, and hopefully I can get a different inverter that is actually uh, a twin leg, uh, split phase inverter. Hopefully PowerJack will send me one, but right now they're not talking to me, unfortunately. So, uh, But the inverter, for what it does, what it's doing right now at 110 volts, is running great. So hopefully that answers your questions or concerns. Take care.